Good morning. Welcome to the outdoor worship space at St. Michael's. My name is Logan McMenemy and I'm a retired bishop of the diocese. I'm so very pleased to be able to be with you. I'm pleased to be here with you in lead services. I am pleased to be able to give Donna a well-earned rest off for the next few weeks. In this ordinary time, that is also extraordinary time, we gather in the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people and the Sarslip nation. We give thanks for them and for the journey we share. In this time of mourning, we are called to listen, to hear stories, their laments, to celebrate their strength, their gifts and their resilience. We are called to witness their sorrow and to pray and work with them for the healing of the whole world. As we seek to know Jesus and to shape our lives by the Word of God, we understand God as something infinite and larger than all we can imagine. A love that comes close to us in all the seasons of our life. We encounter Jesus as the one who invites us to lay our burdens down, to find rest for our weariness and to begin again living in the encouragement and hope that God offers. In our liturgical calendar, we are in ordinary time. And in this summer season, we share in the stories of God's prophets as they struggle, ponder, question, wrestle, and learn. And into that mix, we listen for the gospel and Jesus' invitation to bring us our stories and our stories into this wonderful mix. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In this time and place, as the Diocese of Islands and Inlets, we gather on the ancestral territories of the Kwakwakiwak, New Charnath, and Coast Salish peoples. From many places and peoples, we come to this place in prayer. In this time and place, we gather in the name of the living God. We meet in the presence of Jesus Christ, risen and alive. In this time and place, 
We gather with the community of faith around the globe and across the ages. In this time and place, heaven and earth are one. In this time and place, we are not alone, but one in Christ, knit together in the unity of the Spirit. In this time and place, hallowed, expectant, one people in God, in the name of the Holy and Blessed One, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us hold this moment open to the Spirit of God. Christ have mercy. God have mercy. Christ have mercy. Sustainer of the hungry, you long to feed your children until each is satisfied. Turn our eyes to you alone, that, aware of your deepest longings, we will reach out with Christ to feed others with the miracle of your love. Amen. Let us listen for the word of God. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, 
If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And in the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. So God commanded the skies above, and opened the doors of heaven, raining down manna upon them to eat, and giving them the grain from heaven. So mortals ate of the bread of angels. God provided for them enough food. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and powerfully let out the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust, and winged birds like the sand of the sea letting it fall in the midst of their camp and all around their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. A reading from Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of a Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints of the work for ministry, <laughs> for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. 
So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum. The crowds got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of Christ. A warm welcome to you, wherever you're joining us from. And we gather today separated by land and sea, but we join together one in Christ on this day. Will you join me in prayer? Your word, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Continue to give us light, guidance and direction as we seek to serve and follow you in our generation. Amen. A number of years ago, I was a priest at the parish of St. George, the Martyr in Cadbury Bay. And during that time, we went on a journey together, a journey where we were exploring the shape and form of our worship area to see if that worship area reflected who we were as a community and our relationship with God. On any given Sunday, we would leave the church proper and gather together in the hall, which gave us an opportunity to meet in different forms and different shapes as a worshiping community. We gathered from children age grade five and up. We felt that they had an important place within our community and could speak to our gatherings and what they should look like. We left the other children in the church and the children along with their, their leaders had a special program that led them through this time as well. One particular Sunday comes to mind when a group of people had arrived late for the church service and they walked into the church only to discover there was no adults there, but only a church full of children. Their comment was, usually we go to a church which is full of adults and has no children's presence, but now we have found a church where it's full of children. They then, because of their inquisitiveness, found us over in the upper hall and joined us for worship and asked questions of us of why we were doing what we were doing and why we were gathering the place where we were gathering. They could have done another thing, and that is they could have walked away. Seeing no adults and no clergy, they could have said, well, obviously, Jesus and his disciples are not here, and left. But they didn't do that. They waited around, and they asked the questions, and they discovered that in that church full of children, that Jesus and his disciples were actually present. The Gospel this morning begins with a line that the crowd had followed Jesus, after receiving the food and the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus and the disciples left and the crowd followed them. And they followed them to a place where it tells us in Scripture that Jesus and his disciples were not to be found. Jesus and his disciples were not present. How would that crowd feel? What was going on in their mind? What was their response? Would they, and I'm sure some of them did, just walked away and left the situation? Jesus is not here, his disciples are not here, I'm going home. I'm going home to be with my family. But it also tells us that some went and found Jesus, went and searched for him. 
And when they found him, an interesting conversation arrives. And I think in that situation, there must have been some conflict, some struggle between Jesus and those who had found him. Where did you go? Why did you go? Why weren't you not there? We were looking for you and we couldn't find you. And there might have been even anger, frustration, annoyance on the part of the crowd. I wonder if there's times in our lives when we go expecting Jesus and his disciples to be present. And Jesus and his disciples are not present. And what is our response in those times? There are other times in the gospel where Jesus is supposed to be there. People are expecting him and he is not there, and there is anger and frustration. In John's Gospel, one particular one comes to mind is when Martha and Mary are looking after their brother Lazarus, and he dies. And the words of Martha as, he meets, as she meets Jesus walking down the road is, Where were you? You should have been there. You should have been there when my brother died and you weren't there. So that is a, a normal place for, for folk within Scripture, to be able to show that emotion and those uh, anger towards Jesus, who handles it in a, a, such a loving and compassionate way, who gives them a space to share their anger and gives them a space to reflect on what's happened to them. Jesus and his disciples were not there. What were the, the crowd looking for? Why did they follow Jesus? Were they looking for another miracle, a miracle worker, a magic, a magician? Were they looking for more bread? We're not told. We're left to walk, think through that ourselves. You see, in John's Gospel, it's important for us to remember that John wants us to be born from above, to have new eyes to see, to see beyond the physical. And he challenges us in this Gospel to do that, to see beyond the physical. Jesus addresses the energy that comes from the crowd. He addresses the anger that comes from the crowd. He addresses the situation by rephrasing and reforming their questions and their inquisition of him. He asks them to look beyond the physical, to see beyond the physical, the physical satisfaction of the bread. Now, Obviously, as Christians, we are called to reach out beyond ourselves and feed the hungry and look after physical needs of people. But in this particular gospel, Jesus is calling those who are with him to look beyond that need, to look beyond that, the physical satisfaction of the bread. There's another dimension as well that comes to us. In the movie, Oscar, about Roscoe Romero's life, the Archbishop discovers that within the churches, within his diocese, the military have taken over some of those churches and they're using them as barracks, places to store goods. He discovers that in one particular church, the reserve sacrament is still present. And so along with some of his closest companions, he travels to that church. And when in entering the church, he discovers that it's true that the military are using it for a barracks. And there are animals, there are guns, there's all sorts of things in there. And the hombre holding the reserve sacrament is still present. So Oscar Romero walks into the church and in the scene where he enters, he takes the reserve sacrament out amid the jeers and the scorn of the soldiers who are present. And just as he takes the reserve sacrament in his hand, a machine gun fires over his head and he falls on the ground and the reserve sacrament is, it falls all over the ground. But he doesn't stop there. He picks up the reserve sacrament, and he puts it in the ombre, and he begins to walk out. His friends enter in, and they walk beside him, and they walk through the scorn and the abuse of the soldiers, and they take the reserve sacrament away. There is a political side of this gospel as well, and that is the control and distribution of food. The Romans in Jesus' the time had that control and distribution. And in Oscar Romero's time, the military had that control. But what they don't realize is there is a food, there is a bread that is worth giving your life for. There's a bread that brings life abundantly. And Romero takes that bread and walks out to share it with the community gathered. So there's a political, there's a physical, but Jesus does something else. He shows them a new community, a community gathered together. 
One commentator says, you have to remember that the folk who have gathered here are Jewish and three things are important to them. How was the food prepared? What was the food you were eating? And who were you eating this food with? <laughs> we can carry on. So what was it, how was the food prepared? What is the food that you're eating? And who are you eating this food with? So on this particular day, as the 5,000 gathered, nobody knew where this food was prepared. Really important in a kosher culture. Nobody knew this, but somehow at this time and in this place, with Jesus in front of them, there's a trust. A trust in this person that they only know in a matter-of-fact way. They don't know in any depth, but there's a trust there that they are able to receive this food. And they eat this food in the same way. That trust is there for Jesus uh, as he distributes the food to them. Food that they don't know where it's come from or who has prepared it. And lastly, and I think more importantly, is this is an honor-shame culture. There are a group of people who are honored in this culture and a group of people who are shamed in this culture. You're honored because of your intellect. You're honored because of your religious position. You're honored because you're wealthy. The shame comes because of a job you might have, like a shepherd or a tanner of hides, or because you have a physical ailment. You might be blind or you might be lame. But on this particular day, there's enough trust for everyone to gather together. This is a culture where it's important you are who you eat with. But on this day, that is not important because Jesus brings this community, this varied, this different community together and they eat together. This is a miracle. And this is what Jesus is telling those who have gathered, this crowd who have followed him, this crowd in their frustration, wanting to know what this is all about. He is saying to them, you have to look with the eyes of your heart. You have to look beyond the physical. You have to see God at work in your midst. For the bread of God, Jesus says, is that which comes down from heaven and feeds the world and gives life. That which comes down from heaven and feeds the world and gives life. Jesus is encouraging them to look beyond. Look beyond the physical. Look beyond the bread. Look beyond the fish. Look beyond and see God. See God in the bread and wine. See God in the gathered community, that dispersed, funny, odd, queer-looking community that is the body of Christ. Look beyond and see God. Look beyond and seeing God bringing down and destroying the walls of hostility. Will you join me in prayer? God of grace and love, we see you in various places. Help us to look and to be aware of you, seeing beyond the physical, seeing you in creation, in the ordinary, in the common, and seeing you at work in our lives and at work in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in an affirmation of faith. We believe in God, the source of all things, the God of Abraham and Sarah, the Holy One who freed the slaves from Egypt, the God who is steadfast love and mercy, the God who makes a straight path in the wilderness and who promises to make all things new. We believe in Jesus, the Messiah, who is Emmanuel, God with us. He is King of Kings, yet born of Mary. Jesus showed God's love through healing and teaching. Jesus chose the way of servant suffering by dying on a cross. After three days, he rose from the dead. He is the Lord, the firstborn of the new creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the one who inspires faith, who has spoken through prophets and preachers and common people, the one who breathes new life into the church and the world, the Lord and giver of life, who is making all things new. We believe that God is still creating. We believe that Jesus is present with us. We believe that the Holy Spirit is calling us forth in love and mercy. This is our hope. This is our faith. Amen. 
Please join us as we pray. Loving Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring you our prayers for ourselves and for the world which you created and which you love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are being forced from their homes because of the wildfires that are raging in so many parts of our country and in other parts of the world. We pray for their safety and for the preservation of their homes and their livestock and for all that they hold most dear. May they have patience as they await the time when they may return to renew their lives and to repair or replace whatever may have been lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are risking their lives and facing danger every day as they seek to subdue the wildfires and prevent further loss or damage to our forests and all that depends upon them. We thank you for their courage and pray for the success of their labors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world and especially for Linda, our primate, Mark, primate of our National Indigenous Church, Lynn, our Metropolitan, Anna, our Bishop, and Donna, our Priest. We pray for the people of the parish of Pender and Saturna Islands, and for Ellen Wallingham. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia and for Melter, Primate and Bishop of Saba. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a world of turmoil and national and international unease, there is great need for compassionate leadership and wise decisions. We pray for the Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Premiers and other leaders in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who are sick, all who mourn the loss of loved ones, and all who are facing uncertainties and fears. In a moment of silence, we pray for those whom we know personally are in need of your special grace. Grant them healing and peace of body and mind and assurance of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer you our grateful thanks for all the blessings you bestow upon us day by day, the gifts of life and health, of family and friends, of all that makes our lives meaningful and rich. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers we offer to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the way of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of the God who created you, the Son who has befriended you, and the Spirit who has gifted you be upon you this day and always. Amen.